And I'm recording. Yana, you can go ahead and get unmute uh, and get started. Actually, I'll start. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Metal Takeoff How To. Okay, so um, introduce. Uh, I've been working here for about almost 15 years in November this year. Working with Yana on this Metal Takeoff, I think it's four years now, but it feels longer. All right, Yana, so we're going to start our training today on the step by step for Metal Takeoff Revit Swiss. Take it away, Yana. So we already have a Swiss in place, and the Swiss, uh, I, I see the people here. Let's see who's here, by the way. Oh, it's the people, everybody from Takeoff. We are not popular, I can tell. <laughs> this training, I think all the people know how to do it. So what we decided to do, we just decided uh, for the training purpose, uh, we decided to upgrade our existing Swiss, which is on the wiki, and it's also one click away for the takeoff operators. Every time we do the release, metal material release, we start here. So this is the page where we start. And what we wanted to do, we wanted to test it ourselves like we let's say, almost never done anything before. We maybe know how to do the line command and undercut and see what we run into. So, and we wanted to see like, if like you have any question, what might, where do you go? Um, even things like what folder you go, where you find it in. So we did uh, little videos, some of them not little. Uh, we have to apologize for it. So we, we have a lot of um, uh, time on those videos. And um, I don't think we will be able to play it all. Um, but I just wanna say the metal and material takes of, take offs, it's all about uh, adjustment and improvement and experimentation. Uh, we, um, because we're very predictable uh, and repeatable what we do. So it is a lot of room for um, improvement and kind of seeing things because we repeat things from week to week uh, each time. And also we have very strict deadline. It's not flexible. We can't really, we constantly have to look for the ways to chuck up the time and um, find ways to make it in this time. So we're constantly looking for the way to save time for ourselves. So what we did here, it is a work in progress. We kind of, when we were doing the videos, uh, we, we could see right away for ourselves how much things we can uh, fix <laughs> in the future. So uh, we'll try to go step one, step two, but we'll see how it goes because uh, what we wanted to share things, what people don't know what we do, because certain things they uh, similar with fobs, but some stuff what we do is not really applicable anywhere else. So we wanted to share that. And also because it is a part two of the metal takeoff, uh, we will share a couple of things which we didn't have chance to share in part one. Mm. All right, so this is our first step. It's a step, get the pre-take of meeting notes. And when I was reading it, I was like, where do you get it if you miss there? So this is one of the videos you can play it. We'll see how long it is, Marcia. Uh, it takes a little bit of... Hello, everybody. My name is Jana, and we will be talking about steps for metal takeoff. The step number one in our metal take of private Swiss on the wiki, it's get the pre of meeting notes. Where can you find the pre of meeting notes? So if your job starts from one zero, it will be located on a three month server. And if your job starting from seven zero, it will be on Laverne server. In LA. So you go in your job folder. 
and you go Rajman materials. And usually you can find the latest critical meeting notes here. So what are we actually looking in the critical meeting notes? I'm assuming that you looked on the shop drawings, you have a general understanding of the job, you hopefully were able to attend the critical meeting and have your all your questions answered and just some stuff you want to revisit or make sure you have it correct in your program. So we'll look at the schedule, which is here. It's important to us. Uh, another important aspect is releases, how many weeks we're releasing it to the shop. Distribution, if anything special needs to be done on distribution setup, uh, it will be described here. If something needs to be separated for some reason on a different week or different release, it will be, we'll be talking about it here. Talking about if shop drawing sync is complete or not, uh, you have to have a good feel where you are and what changes might come in still. So everything you need to know. Uh, calculations, calculations probably uh, not done or done like in this case, but the door types, it's a good to back check the door types where it says it's just one door type or several different door types. You wanna know and pay attention to it when you do the metal takeoff. Finishes, it's a one very important aspect for preparation for metal takeoff. If you have a two finishes instead of one finish, you need to know how to set it up. And the other notes you want to read through it and kind of have a general understanding about your project you're starting. The glass information, if it's anything special, you prepared for it. If anything special on uh, gaskets, gaskets, it's miscellaneous takeoff, it's part of the metal takeoff. So we wanna also check it out here, make sure we have like particular here, we're mentioning that this gasket will be taken up linear. So it means it needs to show up on your metal takeoff. All right. So one thing, um, I kind of, my intention was to show it, but just happened that on this uh, critical meeting it wasn't there. Uh, important, important aspect for Marge is um, because she's usually doing uh, field use material for us. It's important to know the stock links if we have any limitations. It's usually for the field use like as SRTs, and um, also important to know if also for the field use if we have any limitations like for the seal trucks and check walls. It's also usually described in a pre deck of meeting. Uh, does anybody here have any questions so far? Ron? <laughs> you guys good? I'd like to add something for the pre take of meeting All right. too, regarding, I mean, we're going to probably touch base more about field use on the next session, but in yes. pre take off meeting, what I, I would really want also is the distribution already uh, decided. So when we're doing the you know, metal takeoff, it's already set and it'll optimize correctly. Yeah. Okay. Come on. We do talk a little bit about filters. Um, so where do you think we should go much? Um, I think because we're if, good. We're if I have a feeling you... <laughs> well, All right. Ahead. No, I think we're good yeah, opening we can... the project database, right? <laughs> okay, let's open project database. Okay. You want to know, I mean, you want to do the distribution? Yeah, let's. Uh, we want to... No, we can do open project database. It's fine. Okay. We can try to go in order. We will we'll see how much time Number we have. Because... 
it's loading so much fast on your computer than on mine. All right, step number two, open the project database. Where will you find the project database? Again, if you are in Freeman, and it's a Freeman job, and you just start the job. So this job starting from 10, 1, 0, will be under drafting, under takeoff. And this is, will be your current database. If your job starts from 7-0 and you are working in engineering department in Freeman, you go to the temp folder on Freeman server, project files, and there it will be already created for you under the takeoff. This, this is your database. As an example. Do we want to touch base on multiple buildings? Uh, on this? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm talking about the yes, space. Let's touch base about it. So, we want to be sure we're using the same database usually are so then we have to this one says check for the job number that's used for the multiple buildings so that's the main thing right when we're using it that we're on the correct job number yeah maybe we should make a video about it i have a film <laughs> i just don't have a job right now but maybe we should just for example we should kind of make a video about it and we usually when we have that though right it. But I do want to add something to that. So now when we have these uh, campus projects for multiple buildings, they usually live on the main, the database is usually be on the first building. And then everything else yes. will be subfolders in the following building A, B, C, or so forth. But mm -hmm. your step three? Yeah. All so right. before you go there, mm -hmm. do you move the database local or how does it work? Yeah, we did not. Um, yeah, I was thinking about it. Yes, we're moving it local, but I'm hoping it's all temporary. <laughs> and I was kind of, I, I wasn't sure if I should uh, kind of mention it because the hopes is we're going back to the office eventually and we don't have to move it. But right now, yes, we're moving it local. Well, it's still faster local anyway, so. Yeah, I I was yeah, we can definitely edit um I will make a list for this uh just to maybe we will add it to the step two. Yeah. Okay. All right, next. Three update Dian Alrighty, step number three, update dying for. This is very important step. So you have your job open. And the first thing you do before starting anything, you click over here and you update your dying for. So this way you will get all the latest and greatest information from the server. Please don't skip this step if you don't want to get in trouble with the programmers later. Okay. We're going to set up distribution. Yeah, I don't know. What uh, I do are that. you just when you're doing the distribution it's this one? Yeah, maybe maybe units? maybe we should go maybe we should go over with the field views on it because it's uh, I, I just did just okay. unions. Yeah. Okay, so, so I, I will preset for us. Okay, and that's fine. I will touch base on this more for the field use for the next session. I'll add it to my list. <laughs> many, many of the filters, uh, the video on filters, it's for the units, since uh, like in the okay, beginning so. we're talking about the units, it's already set up for us right now. So we don't have to so the filters, do it. Yeah. So even, yeah, the filters is pretty much, it, a lot of these are already preset, right? I mean, but this is the standard. I did, 
I did try to go to the some like odd case thing, but uh, generally filters are set up so we don't have to do anything at this point unless well, something special going on. Okay, and there's a video and there's a step yeah. here, so we can go ahead and get to skip on to uh, step six. We're getting into the Revit model, open Revit model. And again, it's for somebody who even doesn't know where to open it. So it's very primitive. Item number six, open Revit model. A few things you need to know about the Revit model you're going to be working on. So you have your takeoff program open and ready to go. Now you need to open the model or the project. So if you open it the first time and you don't know anything about it, you need to find out a few things. So most of the models right now, not all of them, but most of them, we are right now putting them on the cloud and we're working from the cloud on DiEM360. So if your model um, on the cloud on DiEM360 or it is just a file in your job folder, you need to know this information ahead. How can you find out about it? So usually you can find out about it from the pre deck of meeting notes. Or I personally like to um, like to find out about it from the phase one, from the setup team, or from the phase three setup team. So usually they have a notes and it's telling you everything what's pending about it. So you have a general thing general understanding what's going on with the project, then it tells you like who is the PM, who is the PC, who is the drafter. The drafter is very important to you, the person who you will ask a lot of questions and other useful information about the project. So we can see uh, here, which just says Revit year 2018, which it means it's just a file. Uh, so if we want to go and look for this the job and see how it looks. Um, so we just go on the job folder and we go drafting and we go drawings and we have a Revit 18 files. So which it means you will be using Revit 2018 to just open a regular way, open this file. So when you open the file, you will see this is the model. It should be one file here. If it is more than one file, your uh, the file to open needs to have a word central on it. So it needs to say central because it's a central model. So and you will just open this file using open and just going through the browser here. Hey, Yana, mm -hmm. um, you, you can also check the, way. the session. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I, I know. I think I mentioned it in the blue beam, in the blue beam page. Yeah. Yeah. I do it sometimes there. I, I think at least it was my intention to mention you, right? We, we can check it in the same page in the drafting where, um, we have all the bloom session for all uh, beam blue beam session for all the jobs it says there also if it's a job beam 360 and what Revit it is yes uh, chris thank you my gosh some smart people actually watching wow the pressure is on it will be connected to the model all right Margot. but sorry go ahead <laughs> go on all right it's not always the case uh, so most of the jobs right now are on BIM 360. And if you just start in the job and you didn't know about it, you just found out about it from the pre tech of meeting notes or the phase one notes, you need to request the access to the job before you go anywhere further. So if your job is on BIM 360, what do you need to do? It is a, several things you can do. 
you can either send an email to the beam 360 support team so the email is www beam 360 support It is, you just need to start typing W, W, N, it's Amy, it's Ashley, and Kate. So you basically tell them, please give me access to my tilde job or my tilde building A or whatever job you're working on. This is one way to request the access to the job. Another way, you can just send the email to James. Uh, James Sanko, so he can also give you access very quick. And the way, if you prefer another way, which is also a good way because you will know other things if you do it this way. So you can just go to our wiki page, um, class division, and And you go over here, crafting engineering, Lubem sessions ID. So this way you will also have uh, no the most current Lubem session. You can open it from here. If we're talking about this job, this is the most current Lubem section. And it also tells you here the link on to Beam 360 and if the job is actually on Beam 360. So if it's blank, it means it's not on Beam 360. It's just a regular file. Uh, so it tells you if you need to request access, this is your access form. So it's, it's pretty much works the same way as the email. It's just a little bit more animated. So you see the name, you go through the motions. I'm not going to do it right now, but it goes to the same people and they will give you access to the model very quick. Can't you also go to uh, W, uh, Walters right. and Wolf Glass? So once you got the access, it's go ahead. <laughs> Walters and Wolf Glass. What, what do you mean? Uh, the one that Zach showed us um, a couple of weeks ago on the engineering meeting that, That's that was that it was it was that link yeah oh, okay it, it was what he showed us it was that link the one that didn't work at first but it works now apparently yeah let's say it's uh, job was on beam 360 they confirm the access, you have the access. You just go over here. You don't need to open Beam 360 by itself. You just go to your regular Revit, the Revit 2018 in this case, and you go to this icon. And it will show Can you pause for a second? So you go to the, the it's, it's, it's amazing how many times people were trying to actually open Beam 360 to mm -hmm. open the models. It's great. All right. And I've done okay. it too, so. <laughs> this one, document and management. And you go folders and move. And we'll have folders here with the jobs you already have access to. You can see I don't have too many jobs with the access. You go to the folder project files, and it will be looking just exactly the same like on our server. Oh, why it's so shy? The only difference about uh, when you're opening file through Beam 360, when you're selecting it, it, does, it doesn't show you that it creates new local, but otherwise it works exactly the same like another file. When you're opening the file just a regular way. When you select this model, it will create a new local for you. It just will save the copy basically on your on your 
local drive. All right, we will talk about the model in the next video a little bit more. So now yeah, which we're going to get into the check the Revit model. Oh, man, this is like a long video. So that's, that's okay, seven. guys, do you, do you, do you want to <laughs> see something you don't know or because we, I do. <laughs> we do? I do. I don't you even, know. You know everything. I No, I don't even know this part. <laughs> oh, man. I think okay. it's good to know what we're looking at when we're doing the Revit, for especially for takeoff and you know so forth, right? For... Yeah. You ready? Step seven. If it's too long, we're not gonna watch it. Well, we'll go. Let's see how. All right, let's talk a little bit about Czech Revit model. So right now we have a process which is documented on a wiki and um, we are currently working on improving it and transferring this list of steps you want to go through to check the model this is mainly for drafting so hopefully when it gets to take off we don't have to check it so what we're gonna do we developing this tool right now not me we have a Alan working on it for us, and right now it's just in beta, but uh, it is going to be um, accessible for everybody. So it's right here, and it calls model checker. This is the tool, and it reflects the same thing what we have on um, on the wiki. The same steps they just write on the model with the handy tools to check the model. So for us in a takeoff group, if we have time to check the model, we will use the same steps with drafting has. Also, we always talk to the drafter and find out how much time the drafter had spent on the model checking if there are any areas we should be concerned about if something wasn't checked. Also, I think we will be able to see here, it will be shown for us if it was actually checked in the final version of this tool. We can see if those items were addressed, each one of them. For us in a takeoff group, um, you can see here, I already turned on the keys on elevation. And for us, the basically, if we don't have time to check the model, just like uh, we're starting the metal takeoff right now. We don't have much time to check the model, although we do want to study the model to see what's going on. We turn on the keys, um, we're just checking it visually. If we, first of all, we just go through the elevations and see if we can spot something. Uh, I'm not sure what we have here, but something that cuts my eye, particularly here, you can see. This is our pony tubes, and they are running short, and they are running a little bit long here. Like okay, little things like this, which we know will affect our metal. We kind of want to fix them before we do the final export of the unit. Another aspect what we check just visually before we get into the model um, and start actually exporting data from the model. We're trying to fix uh, things like, uh, let's say if we have uh, multiple elevations, we always checking if what's shown here on elevation view, if all the instances are matching to to each other, basically. what we rep This is our representation, the main one. So units on elevation four need to be in this order. 23, 148, and 182. So the way we do it, we don't do anything uh, fancy. We just, first we look at elevations with multiple quantities. This is elevation four. And we can see here, for example, elevation four, but on the floor plan, 
instances, some instances of that elevation. So this, this is the instance we see on a view. But these other instances here, the other six instances, you can see the units not matching to this first instance. So this is something we would address uh, with Drafter and uh, ask to help us to fix it. Uh, we can also look in the deeper and kind of see if we can see the differences, but the things like this need to be fixed before we're starting takeoffs. This is something, um, just a basic check if you have. All right, we'll talk about um, checking the units a little bit more in the um, next video. I think uh, this is kind of like a, the visual. If, if you don't have time to check again, it's just the visual going through the elevation views, uh, looking at this, see if you can spot something um, odd, just an elevation views. Uh, checking your, like, any like error messages, if you can see. The very good tool to what exists right now is this uh, takeoff browser. It's on the takeoff tab, takeoff browser. And to reload what's current on the model, you always need to, if you open it first time, you need to click this reload button and you get the most current information here all the units, what elevations they own. So if you're looking for something and um, you can also look for specific profiles, it gives you a list here. So it's very handy search tool. If you just, um, just start on the model, kind of reviewing the model, you can see here uh, what Profile modifiers you have on the model, just the overview of the, what's going on in the model right now. It will help you to get more familiar with the model. So if you, let's say if you're looking for this profile, you can just select it. It selects all of them. You can see here what elevation they're on, because right now we're not even looking at the units, we're just looking on the model. And we can search it right here it will probably find it for us on the floor plan first. And on the floor plan, you can see uh, what page it's kind of happening. It shows you on elevation and you can just look over here. Mm, elevation nine. Let's say we can just want to look at this instance. And you can see it's highlighting it for us. I didn't change the, excuse me, settings of my highlight because I can see this one very well. But um, if you kind of, you can see very well your selections, you can always change it in um, preferences, in the user preferences over here you can change your selection references all right we'll talk more uh, about what can you check on the model in the next couple of videos so the model check is like a such a huge huge subject and sorry I, <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm just like i'm just like really wasn't sure how deep I should go into it because it is like the whole different thing. It is like a lot of things you can check with the takeoff browser now. I was just recently, I'm showing it here very primitive way um, just because, but yeah, technically we can definitely build on it and make more videos about just model check, but I'm waiting for the tool be uploaded completely. So because it has some nice new features you can use a uh, little bit quicker to check the model. But the takeoff browser is great. You can uh, combine like a lot of things. For example, I don't really check the multiple elevations like I'm showing it here. It is a good dummy check if you, I'm showing it maybe for the drafters because they don't have a takeoff program. 
uh, it's kind of just the first visual one, just turn on the key and see if something is uh, not matching in the multiple elevations. But we have, um, with the take of browser, you can filter it much faster and see right away if it's something is different. Uh, but something maybe I should add uh, in the future for step seven, uh, just like more model check. You going, you going next right away? Yeah, so oh, we got are we doing this? Are we ready to assign the profile modifiers now? Step eight. All right. So I, I just. One. I'm just looking at the time and I have a feeling we're like not going to get Well, there. let's take a look at what we have. I mean, we're getting there. It's almost towards the field, so it's okay. All right. Let's take a look at this one. Next, step eight, profile modifiers. All right. Let's talk about number eight, assigning profile modifiers if necessary. What is a profile modifier and when it is necessary to apply it? The profile modifier, it is a trigger what lets the take-up group mainly know that it is something different uh, between this profile and the detail where this profile goes on. Something different on the parts used or something different on the um, finishes, let's say. So let's look at something what we have here as an example. Uh, we already have a lot of profile modifiers on this model. We don't really have to use them if the family is ready and family is correct, but let's say something was changed on the model and your detail, it's a new detail, but you don't have a new profile match to this detail. So it is acceptable to use the profile modifiers just to let the take a group know that something is different either on um, miscellaneous parts of this detail uh, of the profile or something like part-wise is different. So let's look just on this detail, for example. We already know we're using the profile modifier on this gem. This is just a regular gem. And we're using this profile modifier. So we can look how this family actually looks. Uh, the family looks like this. It's a regular gem. How this looks on the detail. On the detail, it looks like two verticals. It's carved on piece. So it does look different. It looks more like a door gem. This is why uh, drafting for the profile modifier for us, just let us know that don't use actual this gem and use something else. So we will have to set it up in our data, to make sure the thing will come in. Uh, another good example of the profile modifier, it's uh, when we have a door and just to give you some background on this model, this model is not ready for the takeoffs yet. I'm just using it because it's something we were checking. Um, it would be, it wouldn't be so many uh, things going on. This model kind of doesn't look good. You can see it's a lot of profile modifiers and maybe some of them some of them will not be used because by the time when uh, it comes to the take-up group, hopefully they will be replaced with actual profiles, with actual families. You can see right now it's a lot of 
profile modifiers already applied on this chart. Just by scrolling through your mullions, through families with used on the model, you can see some stuff. So you see the model still has some temporary mullions, which uh, something we would have to talk to drafting. Or here, uh, the profile modifier was accidentally put on a cock joint profile, which doesn't do anything, it's just a mistake. All right, so this is the good example of the use of the profile modifier, and we pretty much don't have uh, any other ways to do the units like this um, without doing the profile modifier. So you can see it's a door unit right here. This is one unit, this is another unit. Oh, sorry. So this is a door unit. And particularly here, we would need to have a scarf down piece attached to this vertical for this transition right here. But it is no way right now in the model to apply it. So what we do to just let us know, let the takeoff group know, So we basically would put the profile modifier here on this door family. Just let us know in the in the setup, just let us know that we do have something else attached to it. So it will be more tags drawn here and some extra stuff will come in. And it is pretty common use when you have like a step like this or something transitions like this. To, and you have a scab done piece with rounds only. Fortunately, you can, um, mm -hmm. so you see it's, it's right here, kind of the unit actually steps down on the model. It's, it's like a flag unit, but we don't do flag units. We just do unit with the scab done piece. So this is very common use, very legitimate use of the profile modifier here. Um, another uses of the profile modifier would be common uh, and also necessary. So let's say, it's not on this job, but let's say on the job, you would have this detail used and this profile, those two profiles and used on, let's say an elevation when all of these parts are painted white and maybe on couple of elevation, this front piece, this front, like extended cover. Let's Marge, call it. Marge, I think we should shorten yeah. it up. It's like a super long. I keep yeah. going. I keep going about the profile modifiers. Okay, that's fine. I was so waiting long. for your call. <laughs> yeah, it just this this video is just very long because it's okay. like such a good Let's kind of adjust a little bit. Yeah, let's just just if we want to see more stuff. I mean. That's a little bit of a preview of the profile modifiers. So yeah, the there. profile modifier is like a whole different subject to try mm -hmm. and make a training yeah. about it with James <laughs> right now. Okay, uh, so let that so we have the profile modifier. Now after that the model is checked and all required profile modifiers are applied. So now we do the Except the units. All right. And Chris, yeah. I wasn't allowed to show my favorite tool. <laughs> oh yeah. Good. So this doesn't have the because not tool. everybody <laughs> because not everybody have Dynamo. That's okay. Well, we need to know the long version too. So let's yeah. see, let's see it. Step nine. Go through. Oh, it's I might have gotten it twice. Sorry. All right. <laughs> All right, step number nine. So you have your model open, you have, you checked everything, and you have your takeoff program open, your correct takeoff program. So now you 
you applied all your profile modifiers and you checked the model as much as you could. So now you're ready to renumber your units. We call it X success the units. So if you're doing it first time and only first time, if you're only doing it first time for material takeoff and it's the first building, so you need to remember to clear up the registry. So to clear up the registry, you say F1 button on your keyboard and it brings you to the tables and you go down to the... Oh shit, it's F11 registry. Yes, it's F11. F11. <laughs> you register. You select everything and what it does, it will basically renumber, it will help to renumber that you need to start them from union U001, not from some random number next to mine. So you clear the registry, you just delete all the records. And again, please remember, you only do it if you're doing it first time. And also it's helpful, uh, go then in elevation and four, and just clear up all those things. Yeah. So it will. When you've done this, you go on your model, you have your takeoff program open, you go on the model, and it is a couple ways to do it. So the easiest and accessible for everybody way go to your sorry Chris stop. Mm -hmm. you go to take a browser mm -hmm. you reload you, you reload your model again I have a better tool than it but not everybody has it yeah that's true. unfortunately so you go units you bring all the units here on the front To select them all. I think I missed one. You see, they're all selected. And you, you click this find button. So I selected all the units, and what you want to do. You go down here in the data, in the properties, in the data, you say Q, X, 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 small X's, not capital X's, and you say apply. You can just double check it. You can refresh your model. So all the current information will get downloaded. And you can see all your units now. Oh, one unit didn't get selected. Let's see Daisy. It happens. Yeah. I'll just update it by itself. I'm not very good at making a video okay. short. You can see now all the units in the model, you can see they all you at success. So you're ready to start running your first UPD for the metal pickup exports. Okay. Yeah, I have to redo this particular video because I said F1 instead of F11. <laughs> We should all know it's F11, right? Yeah, but <laughs> like we said, we're trying to do the videos for someone who doesn't know anything. Kind of. I think that's good. That, I think it's good you had the mistake in there because if someone misses it, then they know how to fix it. Exactly. That's what that's what I was thinking. Like we missed that that one unit. It's like okay, I know what to do now. All right. Oh yeah, they they all one take. Those videos are all one take. I'm I'm just and you can tell I didn't watch it. If I watched it, I'm. It's okay. So now got to ten. We're going up to what seventeen? Is you know, Maji, I since we only have an hour and we're kind of getting close. Mm -hmm. Does anybody has like um, 
question or something uh, wants to see something because we still have a lot of steps and we probably will have to do part two anyway so at this point speak up stay silent forever so as you were documenting your process what did you guys learn as you were making these videos and stuff like that is there are there things that jumped out at you or things that you learned in this in this process of documenting yeah so in each 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 individual one uh each basically step i wrote down the ideas for future things to <laughs> shrink it down because i didn't like how long it is um but like i said i'm documenting right now what we have at this place but definitely when you're going like this and you intentional and present and kind of like looking for something and kind of judging it you definitely find in a lot of things you could um, change and we already know it's a lot of things are possible to change and uh, so i kind of pretty much have something i want on date and every step right now at this point yeah and same thing for me um i kind of did it raw so like I didn't look into the drawing. So when I started doing the um, you know, converting of uh, elevation and there were like little errors on the drawing that it didn't kind of threw me off when I was doing the video. So as I was going through step by step, so it's kind of like you kind of see, okay, we've got to check that another list that we've got to make sure that it's on there, you know? So there's a lot of little things that, or even a little shortcut. Oh yeah, there's something else that can be done. So it was, um, it was interesting. <laughs> Yeah, the, the videos like were all done, all done live. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just we do live. have error messages coming out and we're dealing with it right, right on, this, on the way. But it is a lot of things um, kind of beyond that. And it's just like you don't know how far you want to go uh, to talk about all the possible error messages and what you do. It's like it seems like it's a whole different uh, subject, just how deep you want to go. I mean, that's, that's the thing for me is like when I watch each of these little steps, it's great because like the one you just did, like that whole thing could be a button, right? Mm -hmm. like it could clear and, out. It, and it is, and I'm kind of a little bit lying in this video. It is an actual button exists, which Chris made it for us. Um, but does, I was... Hang on, does the registry and the database and everything, like one button? No, it that, doesn't do that, the registry. But you so don't want to do... Be one button. Yeah. But you don't want to do registry. Like I said, it's only you're doing it only first time. But you're kind doing XXX one time too. No, UXXX you're doing multiple times. Many, many times during the material takeoffs, I have to do it several times. Uh, and then we're doing it for FOPs again. And we do have easy button, which Chris made for us. And it's wonderful. We'll love it. Uh, but I was told do not mention because it's not for everybody and um, it, it, no, it's, it's for everybody, but just not everybody can have access to it at this point. <laughs> yeah, okay. sorry. It's for everybody, but not everybody can have it. So I don't know. If I'm, I'm very privileged to have it. <laughs> but it definitely makes you kind of re-examine, like just doing it this way. It's um, uh, makes you re-examine your own processes. It kind of makes you look at them, uh, kind of forces you to kind of look at them, which is very, I think you can, you can get to that um, sort of stage of mind without doing it, I think. It's just very organic way to make yourself Oh, I want to improve my process. I honestly didn't like a lot of things that came. I wrote them down just because um, I know they will not come in like tomorrow when I have to do actual like release because I'm go, 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 go. I'm not like thinking I just need to get through it. And when you kind of analyzing it all and you making video and making sure you kind of trying to mention everything, don't go too deep, but mention like the main things and a lot of things would kind of annoying. <laughs> Especially on the field use margin. My, I think field use is the most uh, underdeveloped thing. Under yeah, I found a lot of it in there. <laughs> that yeah. it was like, it was more of a tedious process, but um, I, you go, I go by it so fast and you'll we'll kind of 
see if we can go through some of those videos pretty quick because some mm -hmm. of them gets a little long. <laughs> but yeah, we have we have so right now basically, guys, we have steps. Uh, uh, we're trying to finish all of them, and we have a lot of steps already documented. We like our goal is to finish all of them. A lot of steps uh, useful. My personal masterpiece is miscellaneous because nobody cares about it. Nobody does it. Uh, so it's a it, it is a masterpiece. Who can survive it? Uh, it's a kind of good videos to watch if you have to do miscellaneous on your job. It's a lot of helpful um, tips there. Yeah, it's right here. It's in the end. And you're constantly aware of miscellaneous when you do the metal. Uh, you have to think about it because it is a, a sub product, sub serve, sub release of the metal release, and you you have to think about it. You have to notice it. You have to check it. All right, guys. Any other questions, uh, suggestions, concerns? I guess no. Um, I have one. The glass sizes in Revit. Mm -hmm. uh, how? What's been your, your experience so far as uh, getting the setting block sizes mm -hmm. coming in? I know we're just starting mm -hmm. to incorporate this. So, what have you guys experienced so far with that? Yes, uh, we did one job which went through with the uh, different size of setting blocks, and uh, it worked out great. It's um, we had it all set up for us, like a lot of many things already set up for us uh, from stage one, stage three. And um, it was a very reasonable and job really had the big lights and it was very reasonable. I think we had three different setting blocks on the job. It was no issues and uh, it's very easy way because we used to do profile modifiers and now to identify the places where we have a different setting blocks and right now it's coming in from the model and it looks great. Any any other questions? Joe, do you have a question for me? I have, no? I have one. Um, when, yeah. when you're killing the unit registry, uh -huh. in that unit registry, are, are those like the where the location ID is also established? Is that why you said you got to do it the first time? I'm not killing location IDs. Okay. I mean, I'm killing uh, registries. Uh -huh. Location ID sustain. It's different. Okay. It's different. Yeah. You're, you're not killing location IDs. Okay. And location IDs, like uh, they, when I repeat the model, it will be right from the model. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. I'm. Uh, I'm sorry we couldn't finish it all. I know it's very exciting. I hope it was exciting, as exciting for you as for me. You can tell we are very excited about our process. <laughs> um, but I'm suggesting if you ever, like me and Manji will be on vacation and you are the lucky one who's doing the metal takeoff instead of us, mm -hmm. please watch these videos. They are very helpful. <laughs> Awesome. Well done. Nice job. Oh, really? Nice job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Right. You're going to stop it?